Good morning, Dr. Gary here. On the road, we are dental practice brokers nationwide. And today's topic is, what happens when the tax return doesn't reflect what the seller stated the gross income of the practice is? This is a problem. We're gonna get into what happened this time. So we've been doing this for 12 years now. And uh, I was a dentist for 25. We have 10 employees, including two CPA accountants, and we are growing. We're in 27 states now. You can reach us from 7.30 a.m. East Coast time to 9.30 p.m. So give us a call if you need advice or whatever. We're here to help you, buyer or seller. We work 363 days a year. We take off Christmas and Easter. So we pick up the phone uh, virtually every day. Now, if you are a seller thinking about selling to a large uh, DSO, you have a practice that's grossing 900 or more, five operatories or more, four operatories or more, please give us a call because the um, majority of all DSOs will pay our fee. We'll pay our commission. There's no commission to you. And some of the DSOs will actually reimburse for your legal fees at closing. So please give us a ring. Our number is 201-663-0935. And you can reach us at dentalpracticeguide.com or nationwidedentalpracticebroker.com. We're here to help you. Um, the information you're about to hear is for entertainment purposes. It is not legal or business advice. So please give us a ring and we'll help you out. And uh, let's see what we could do. So anyway, what happened now? The seller tells us the practice was grossing X dollars. And it was around that October time. He hadn't done his tax returns yet. And 2020 isn't really reflective of a good year. So we're waiting for the 2021. We took his... We provided a letter of intent based on his statement that he was grossing X number of dollars. Now, a letter of intent was given, and of course a letter of intent is non-binding. So, you know, it's not critical. But all of a sudden, after the letter of intent, and we started the due diligence, his tax returns did not match what his stated income was. So, you know, obviously we have a problem here. And uh, we're trying to resolve it now. You know, we haven't had this issue in the past, but we have it now. So we got the tax returns and it was about $88,000 difference of what he said he was grossing and what the tax return stated. So this is a big problem. Now the reason the letter of intent was given because the buyers are anxious to get it done. They assumed he was telling us the truth, and I did too. And the letter of intent is non-binding. So with all of that, you know, it's, uh, you take the chance. And that's essentially what we did. So one thing leads to another, and we get all the information in, and bingo, uh, there's this big discrepancy. So we asked the seller, well, what happened? You know, can you give us an explanation of this? And he said, well, what happened was I have two practices and some of the specialty work that I have goes to my second practice. I treat the patients there. That's why you have this discrepancy. And uh, it's not really a problem. I just didn't want to come to my primary office. I only wanted to treat everybody at my secondary office. And that's why you have a big difference here. We're like, well, wait a minute now, Where's the, what are the tax returns? He says, well, I use the tax returns of the secondary office for that. And we said, but that's a problem because the bank only wants to utilize the tax returns of the primary office. So, you know, we're going to have to deal with this. So what we're getting now is a profit and loss for year 22 from his accountant that will accurately reflect, reflect all the treatment that was done that supposedly was done at the other office. And, and of course, what about the expenses and so forth? We've got to figure that out. So the bank is going to try to work with year 22 and uh, get a new profit loss that's signed by his accountant that will show that the income in year 22 is truly 
uh, what the stated income that the doctor said. And I think we're going to be okay, but it, it you know creates a lot of suspicion for the buyer. Fortunately, the buyer is anxious to get this practice. It's a good opportunity. It has great equipment, etc. So we're going to see what we can do. But this is very difficult. You can't state one thing and have another on the tax return and then tell somebody, well, don't worry about it. This is really what happened. Tax returns are your bottom line. If it's not on the tax return, many people look at it as though it doesn't exist. But since the buyers really want the practice and the bank is going to try to work together with them and will work with their as accountant to prove that those patients that were seen at the other office are not seen at the other office routinely, that it's a specialty procedure that the doctor who has two offices simply doesn't want to go to the primary office and perform the procedures there because he has his setup and, and so forth at the secondary office. I know it's confusing. I rarely come across this, but I do occasionally. Now it's 12 years I'm doing this. The number of times I had this, we had a 20% difference between what the buyer stated, the, the seller stated, what the practices, and what the tax returns state. Uh, it's a huge difference. So every deal is different, and you've got to be ready. Fortunately, we have great uh, dental attorneys, great dental banks. We're all working together to try to put this deal together. We legitimately feel he's telling the truth, but we have to document it and prove it. So that's what we're up to now, and it's challenging. But we're here to do this. We're used to chaos. I know many of you sold practices before and think you can do it with a boilerplate contract, and they've done five, six, so I've done over 150, and I'm still learning. It's always different. So um, this is what we're up against. We thought we'd share that with you today. Uh, we have a bunch of new information coming out soon, plus new practices. Northern Virginia is on fire. We've got four practices, five practices there, so we'll, we'll share that with you. Thank you for listening. Bye now.